Okay, everyone. In this presentation, we'll be uh, looking at some examples of the evolution of English. We'll start with the Old English in Beowulf, and we'll and we'll see how this uh, language changes also in the Middle English of the Canterbury Tales. So first of all, let's talk about Old English. As we said, Old English is a Germanic language. It is very different from contemporary English, and we'll see here in a bit how much this difference is great. Uh, it's so different that it has a very different grammar, syntax, and phonology. Letters and words are pronounced very differently in Old English than in uh, contemporary English. One of the best examples is the fact that nouns are declined in cases, just like Latin or Greek. They have a nominative, an accusative, and so on. So let's have a look at Beowulf. Okay, here you see a page of the uh, manuscript that's uh, where we found Beowulf. We found, we found Beowulf in just one uh, manuscript and as we uh, said, is a, it is an Anglo-Saxon epic poem and it is found on a single manuscript, the Cotton MS Vitellius A15 and you can see that in the British Library. If you just look at that, you see that some characters are very uh, different from the ones that um, you normally read in English. Let's have a look at, the, at an extract taken from your book. Probably the translation is quite different, but let's have a look at that. That's the um, that's part of the ending of uh, of Beowulf, where uh, in this party it is uh, described at the funeral of the main character Beowulf, and you see that this is a modern translation. It's possibly quite the, uh, a bit different from the one you have in your book. If I uh, this one is translated by the uh, Irish scholar and author Shimusini, and here you see that this is the main, uh, the original transcription of the Old English. So you will, you see that it is completely different. The, there are um, many different symbols that represent different sounds in, uh, in Old English, and you see how the lines are different. You see that every line in Beowulf is separated uh, with a space in the middle. And the scheme is that um, every half verse has an alliteration with the, with the previous one. So the first half alliterates, the first half of, of a line alliterates with the second part. Of the line. There are no rhymes or modern poetic um, devices. Let's move to Middle English. Middle English is an evolution of the Anglo-Saxon and it is a Germanic language but uh, there are many influences coming from French and Latin. Uh, again, the Roman domination of England uh, had a had an important uh, weight and the presence of monasteries had an important weight on the uh, English language and also uh, the fact that uh, William the Conqueror and its court and its court came from France and spoke French obviously had a very large influence on the um, on the evolution of that old English into Middle English. It is much more similar to contemporary English and we will see that in a part taken from the Canterbury Tales. Grammar and syntax are more or less uh, the ones that we know and we study in, uh, in school, but there are some changes to pronunciation. So here we have a page from, the, uh, from a manuscript 
uh, of the Canterbury Tales, and if you look closely, you can see that um, it's much more similar to a modern um, manuscript, to, to a modern printed page in uh, modern English. Canterbury Tales, as we discussed, is a narrative poem by Geoffrey Chaucer, and it was written in Middle English at the end of the 14th century. Let's have a look at the first uh, 12 verses of the whole poem. This is the beginning. You will see that the translation we have here is different from the one you have on your book. The one on your book rhymes and it's uh, possibly a bit better than this one uh, in order to understand some important elements, but uh, the couple of elements I want to point out are present in this uh, translation as well. Let's have a look at it. Okay, here is the text, and now on the other side of the page uh, you will see that this is the um, original text. You notice that there are um, some differences, but if you uh, get, uh, if you start reading that, even using a kind of modern English pronunciation, you will see that um, there is no uh, enormous difference. When the April with the shores suit, the drought of March hath pierced to the root. This is something quite like the original pronunciation. I'm not completely sure, I'm not uh, very good at that, but uh, have a look at the original text and notice that each couple of lines rhymes with each other. It's A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and so on. And this is quite interesting because um, have a look at the highlighted lines that are now uh, uh, highlighted in yellow. And smell fowls make a melody that sleep in the night with open eye. First of all, notice how uh, the word I is just Y E and, on, and not E Y E as in modern English. Let's see what's the, uh, what are the uh, corresponding lines in the uh, modern translation. And small fowls make melody, those that, those that sleep all the night with open eyes. Here, in this case, you see that modern pronunciation breaks the rhyme. You see that here. Uh, in the original text, you see how um, the final words of the verse rhyme with the, the sound I, but in today's English the word melody has lost the final E and has become melody that does not rhyme with eyes. So this is a testimony of the evolution of language as we... Uh, and this evolution and how this evolution changes the rhyme scheme. So when we read the Canterbury Tales, we have to keep in mind, even if the text we have uh, doesn't rhyme, that this text originally was rhymed because we are working on a different text and on a language that changed and evolved over time. So, uh, with that being said, uh, thank you and see you next time.